33 years in the law enforcement profession is a long time. You know, most chiefs uh, average around uh, four to five years, and I've even been uh, a chief longer than many. And, and so, you know, we have accomplished a lot. Um, there is a tremendous legacy um, that, that I have had the opportunity to be a part of building uh, for this moment in time. And so, uh, why not now? What often gets captured is, is the negative. Um, that's what gets portrayed out there in the community. But, but a lot of those highs uh, are sometimes really reflected in what I, what I shared earlier. It's sometimes just that community member who reaches out. Um, it's, it's being able to, to come out there um, in the midst of, of some of the experiences that we had um, throughout some of the, the protests, to be able to talk with members of the community, to hear their side, um, to hear their voice, um, and then to assess, you know, where do we go from here? You know, COVID protest, um, civil unrest, anger, um, destruction, devastation, uh, those who committed it and those who received it. Um, create a lot of um, a, a, a trail of, of emotional experiences, um, but but also looking at ways that we can we can heal some of the brokenness in our communities. I'm a police officer, but I'm also part of the community, and um, and and you can be both. Uh, you don't have to be one or the other. And, and we have to recognize there has been hurt by law enforcement in our communities. Um, and we have to find those ways to heal that community, to heal our communities, to heal each other. Uh, and it does require reaching across the aisle. It requires um, a two-sided conversation. Um, there are so many other factors that I think contribute to, to where we are as a society. Um, the level of hate, the, the historical perspectives um, of law enforcement, um, the, the, the lack of equity um, in many facets in our community, from education to housing to transportation to access, period. It cannot all fall on the police department, but because we are so public facing, because we are so um, we are so integrated in serving a community, and very often we're we're integrated in serving a community um, in ways that um, there should probably be other social services in place to 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 assist. And when we are that person, then we are also that person or the, that entity that, that gets the backlash the easiest with low-hanging fruit. We're present. When I take the uniform off, I'm still a black woman. Um, and have I, have I gotten in an elevator with someone and they clutch their purse? <laughs> have I walked into a boutique and I'm followed around? Um, because on that day, I'm in my jeans and a t-shirt or sweatshirt. Black lives matter. <laughs> and all lives have to matter. But I'm black. Uh, and so, you know, because I wear the uniform, I feel it on both sides. And, you know, being in the position that I'm in, you then uh, assess and find ways that you can hopefully um, further enrich your agency so that um, officers have an understanding of where where we all sit um, but we look at the civil rights you know um, we look at um, you know the oppression of people of color and we look at um, you know, who recently passed away, Congressman John Lewis, and I had the honor to meet him. 
uh, and his picture of the two of us is, is in my office. I look at it often before he passed away because he is a reminder of, um, of where we've been uh, and, and where we need to be. We look at, you know, the names that have made national news um, and the impact that it's had here in our city and in our community. Um, you, you know, you, you, you don't get to whitewash that away. Um, we have to assess how we, how we do things differently, how we build bridges, how we build communities, how we build relationships. And, and there's no one way to do it. You know, I've, I've had people who look just like me say, you don't understand what it's like being black in America. I do. I just happen to be black in America in law enforcement. Right now, I just think we're, we're all seeing each other um, on separate islands and uh, the truth of the matter is, I probably have more in common with you than you realize. Um, but we are so forced at times to see our physical differences that we miss the things that we cherish and, and have in common um, that probably connect us in ways that we never thought or imagined. And we won't ever know unless we're willing to have a conversation. But often the differences are fewer than the commonalities. I don't get to look at one little corner of the box. I've got to look at all the parts, all the pieces um, in that box. And sometimes those pieces are broken. Uh, and, and so I've got to be intentional about what I say and how I say it and, you know, how I lift folk up and, um, and encourage and and rebuild and and offer that that slice of hope sometimes when it doesn't seem like there is any. As a black woman in the capital city of the state of North Carolina, uh, in the South, um, it's an honor to be where I'm at, um, and and it's a humbling experience to be here.